administration's releasing its first federal budget proposal as well. The president's proposing a one and a half trillion dollar annual budget for the next fiscal year. That's 118 billion higher than 2020. Here's some of the biggest headlines. It includes 753 billion dollars in defense spending, up less than two percent from last year. It would give the Pentagon about the same amount as last year, 715 billion dollars, even though Republicans have pushed for more. If the administration is serious about competing with China, deterring Russia, and preserving American leadership, the most important test will be in the president's budget. It's not the full budget, as you, as you know, but just for clarity purposes, it's uh, a kind of discretionary guidance. The budget also ends funding for the border wall. It also includes $769 billion in non-defense spending, up 16% from last year. Most of that money would go toward education, public health, transportation, and housing. A more comprehensive budget proposal is expected later this spring with details on what exactly all of this money would pay for. As you likely know, the president's budget is just a proposal. Congress has the final say on that budget. Lawmakers have until October 1st to reach a compromise on a final budget. That way they can avoid a government shutdown. In March of 2022, U.S. President Joe Biden submitted a $5.7 trillion budget plan to Congress that called for record peacetime military spending and a billion in additional support for Ukraine to be financed with higher taxes on corporations and the ultra-rich, the latter, which was never carried out. The president also said he was calling for higher defense spending to strengthen the U.S. military and forcefully respond to Russian President Vladimir Putin's aggression against Ukraine with a billion in additional support for Ukraine's economic, humanitarian, and security needs. The latter, again, which was never carried out. Fast forward to today's article written by Michael Rainey at the Fiscal Times. The Biden administration is now reportedly close to settling on a top line figure for defense spending in its 2024 budget proposal scheduled for release on March 9th. The chief financial officer at the Department of Defense said the spending request for 2024 is expected to be larger than the $858 billion enacted in the 2023 fiscal year, making it the largest in history in nominal terms. The total for 2023 included $817 billion for the Pentagon, with the remaining going forward towards defense programs in other departments led by the Department of Energy. While the president's request will likely mark a historic high, Congress is expected to consider reducing that level as lawmakers look for ways to cut the deficit. Republicans in the House are calling for significant reductions in overall spending levels and are seeking to use the debt ceiling as leverage in negotiations over the issues. Negotiations the White House has refused to engage in so far. One idea being discussed by Republicans is to reduce all discretionary spending, which includes defense to 2022 levels. That would mean a reduction of about $75 billion next year for the Pentagon or a nearly 10% budget cut. However, there's no agreement on that approach or on the idea that defense would be subject to any cuts at all. There are plenty of defense hawks in the Republican conference, some of whom want to see an increase in spending in 2024 in the range of 5%. According to Representative Rob Woodman, the Republican out of Virginia, told Task and Purpose magazine, quote, we have a duty to protect taxpayer dollars to reduce our debt and deficit, but this must not come at the expense of compromising our military strength and readiness, end quote. At the same time, a handful of fiscal hawks say that everything in the discretionary budget should be fair game for reductions, including defense and especially aid for Ukraine. What they won't tell you is that they want aid for the China and Iran looming wars. Pentagon Comptroller Michael McCord told Political that if Republicans do push ahead with the defense cuts, they'll have to get specific about where to reduce spending. According to McCord, quote, you're going to have to face the harder question of what it is that you want to do less. Do you want to have fewer people? Do you want to have fewer ships, fewer airplanes, smaller pay raises? That's where the money is in the defense budget, end quote. One specific issue in the defense budget cited by House Speaker Kevin McCarthy as a desirable target for cuts could be difficult to address. As he said, quote, eliminate all the money spent on wokeism, eliminate all the money trying to find different fuels, end quote. McCord said that eliminating such efforts would produce very little by way of savings. He went on to say 
I'm not aware that anybody knows the number, but you can need a super telescope to see it. And quote, the bottom line, expect to see budget hawks battling defense hawks as Republicans attempt to negotiate a spending deal in exchange for raising the debt ceiling in the coming weeks. Officials are very close to settling on a final top line number for the Defense Department. And like I said, will be set for public release on March 9th. Lawmakers have consistently voted to boost defense spending on a bipartisan basis, noted defense expert Todd Harrison, the managing director at Metria Strategic Insights, would go on to say, everything is uncertain until Congress figures out how they're going to resolve this standoff over the debt ceiling. The problem is that Biden can negotiate all he wants with McCarthy, but it's not clear McCarthy can deliver the votes in the House. The possibility of spending cuts and even defaulting on the nation's debt adds to a dangerous environment of uncertainty at the Pentagon. The problem goes on to figure out how much money could be spent on the Pentagon and how much less for the American people. 